Before we begin, I want to thank you all for watching our videos and supporting our channel, and I hope to welcome more of you to our family of now more than 5,000 subscribers. You are tossing 300 pieces of crumpled paper into a bin. You missed the first, but nailed the second one. Subsequently, your chance of hitting the bin is your cumulative win rate. What is the probability that you hit the can 298 times? Let's name some of the variables that we encounter in this problem. Let yi's be random variables showing if the i toss is a hit or a miss. Now rephrase the question in terms of this variable. The probability that yn is equal to 1 is the average of y up until n minus 1. We denote by x the number of hits in n tries, which is just the sum of y's, and we are searching for the probability that x300 equals 298. We can start with a series of small-scale examples, hoping we can see a pattern and extrapolate. When there are two tosses, under the imposed conditions, the only possible value for x is 1. For three tosses, the only unknown is the last one. You can either hit or miss it with a probability of a half for a total of one or two hits. In the case of four tries, there are four possible combinations of tosses with probabilities as seen. They aggregate into three values for the number of hits, one, two, and three, all equally likely. Since we have at least one miss, the total number of hits resulting from n tries lies between 1 and n minus 1. Let's use induction to prove that all values have equal probability, 1 divided by n minus 1. Start by assuming this conjecture is true for some n minus 1. For the event xn equals 1, the only possibility is that xn minus 1 is 1, and the n toss is also a miss. From the induction assumption, the probability of the first event is 1 divided by n minus 2, and the miss after n minus 2 misses from n minus 1 tries has a chance of happening equal to n minus 2 divided by n minus 1. Multiply the two, and the result is 1 divided by n minus 1. Now, for xn equals k, for any k bigger than 1, we have two avenues, and we can condition on the result of the last toss. The two probabilities linked to x n minus 1 are 1 divided by n minus 2. Given that we know the total number of hits up until the last, we also have the probability that the last one will hit. In the case of the first term, we need this last one to be a miss, and in the second one, a hit. Some arithmetic later, the final probability is 1 divided by n minus 1. We now concluded the induction step. For any value of n, all n-1 possible values that the total number of hits can take are equally likely. So, the probability that you hit 298 out of the 300 tosses is 1 divided by 299, or a little more than 0.33%. In the case of the first problem, you were role-playing as a guy that easily rides the momentum. The better you did, the better you will do next, and vice versa, in the case that luck is not on your side. What if now you are in a different setting? You start your first two tosses like before, but you are nervous and your chance of hitting is the cumulative miss rate. How does the probability of 298 hits change? Employ the same formal setting with the appropriate changes in the probability of yi equal to 1. Since it works so well for the first problem, we can use the power of the example again for 2, 3 and 4 tosses. Unfortunately, a formula cannot be easily observed, but we can attempt to deduct it the old-fashioned way. Let us condition on the outcome of the last toss and generalize the computations for n tosses and n minus 2 successes. As before, the first conditional probability requires a miss in the last toss with a chance of n minus 2 divided by n minus 1, and the second one to be a hit. We can denote by an the probability that xn equals n minus 2. Then, 
the last term contains a and minus 1. We have a first degree recurrence. If we can find the probability, we miss only one toss. Each subsequent hit has a decrease in probability, and multiplying gets at the final result of 1 divided by n minus 2 factorial. Things look a lot simpler now since we abstracted out all the statistics. Multiply by n minus 1 factorial, add an n, and factorize the constant 2. We are met again with a recurrence. We can repeatedly apply this formula for n minus 1, n minus 2, and so on until we reach a3. We have the actual value of a half computed in the exploration phase. The solution to the recurrence is facile, and we can apply this formula for our desired n, 300. The probability of a high number of successes is almost negligible compared to the previous case. Given this, when simulating our results, we need to go for a much smaller value of n, for example, 10. As desired, the results from the simulation converge to the true results computed mathematically. The predicted binomial shape of the probabilities of outcomes when the tosses are independent becomes, under the constraints of the first question, a uniform distribution. The second question changes it the opposite way, disproportionately increases the value closer to the middle of the graph, and making it almost impossible to become a big winner or loser. Thanks for watching and thank you to our Patreons. If you enjoyed this and would love to see more, like this video, subscribe to the channel and hit the alarm bell to get notifications when new videos are released. Leave any comments about this problem below or on the problems dedicated webpage. For more info, please check the description box below. See you next time!